Virtual reality gives us some pretty unique opportunities that we can't really experience the same way on a desktop or console platform. For example, rather than using an analog stick on a controller or pressing a button on a keyboard, we can use thrusters in order to be able to fly ourselves around the world and actually feel as though we're a superhero flying through the sky. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up some very simple thrusters tied to each of your hands on your player, so that way you are able to move around as though you are an actual superhero. But before we go ahead and jump to that, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more just like this one, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And with that, let's jump right into the video. Now let's go ahead and jump right into this. So I'm going to start by opening up our content browser. I'm going to create a new folder here called Blueprints. And then in here, we're going to create a Blueprint class. This is going to be a character. And I'm going to call this Thruster VR Character. Now, we can't use our standard VR pawn, and I actually have it open over here for reference. Um, the reason we can't actually use this is if we look at our root component, we have this default scene root, and in here we have no gravity, we have no collisions, and we have no physics, all of which are necessary in order for this to work and work well. If we look at our thruster VR character, you can see we have this capsule component as our root component. And in here, you can see if we scroll down, we have simulate physics, enable gravity is already uh, enabled. And uh, we also have collision because this is a capsule component. So we actually, if we scroll down here, you can see we have a collision preset set to pawn. So we have everything that we need here in our thruster VR character. This is not necessarily something we have in our VR pawn. Now, you can certainly modify what I'm going to be doing here to our Thruster VR character or uh, uh, modifying the scene root in order to, at the release attempt, to get the same effect. But I personally like to use a Thruster, or I personally prefer to use a standard character as opposed to a pawn for something like this. So with that, let me go and close that VR pawn because we're not going to need that anymore. Let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm going to... In our capsule component, we'll start here. I want to set our capsule radius and our half height each to one. The reason I'm doing this is because we still need this to be there, so that way we're able to collide with the environment. But if we have it set to some outrageous height or something like that, then it's actually going to raise our player up and it's going to make them appear much taller than they actually are. And it can do other weird things as well. So I, I usually just set that to a standard one by one. Uh, coming down here, as I already mentioned, we have to simulate physics. And then one last thing that we need to do here is under constraints, lock all of our rotations. The reason for this is if we collide with the ground or any other piece of the environment, this uh, capsule component may start rolling around. It may start acting all, all finicky and y you'll just have a very hard time seeing what's going on. So I personally like to just lock all the rotations. It's a very simple solution to this problem. So um look, make sure you lock all rotations otherwise you will have some weird spazzing out when you run into the ground or any other object now let's go ahead and add in everything that we need for vr so i'm going to start by adding in a camera we don't need to do anything further to this i'm also going to add in two motion controllers we'll call one motion controller left and i'm just going to duplicate one here and the other one's going to be called motion controller right um, and make sure each of these are attached to the root component. They're not attached to each other or the camera or anything like that. And then moving on to our motion controllers here, I'm going to set a display device model for each of these. I'm going to set this to a Vive pre-controller mesh. This can be whatever you want. This is just what I like to use. So that way I can visibly see where my controllers are in the, in the uh, level. Then for our motion controller right, we need to come down here and set our motion source to right. Uh, we don't need to do the same for motion control left because by default it's already set for left. Now, final thing that we need to do for uh, the initial setup here is I'm going to add in some arrows, one to each motion controller. So I'm, I'm going to go and rename this actually. I'm going to call one arrow right and let me go and create a new one called arrow left. Now the reason for these, I'm going to go and click on both of these. The reason for each of these is this is going to point in the direction that we're going to move in. So as you can see in this current, uh, in this current scenario, it's actually going to propel forward uh, in whatever direction we're pointing our motion controller in. Now, if you want, you can modify this. Maybe you want to have it point down in this direction. You may want to have it point up. That's entirely up to you. I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. We're going to point it 
we're going to make the arrow point along with our motion controller. The other thing you may want to modify is the arrow length. This is going to control the magnitude of, uh, of our force that we're going to be applying to our character. So this will control how fast we're going, how quickly we're able to change directions, things, things like that. Um, I'm going to leave it at 80 because I thought it was pretty good to start out with. But if you'd like, you can certainly slow this, you can certainly uh, decrease this value in order to make that force lower or increase to make that force higher. So, with that out of the way, now we can move on to our event graph. Here in our event graph, this isn't going to be too difficult here. So, we're going to start by removing the begin play and actor begin overlap. I'm just going to delete those. We will be using the event tick, but we need to do just a little bit of additional setup beforehand. And I'm going to go ahead and grab our trigger left and our trigger right input action. So let me go and grab these real quick. And in case you're unaware of what these are, how to get them, um, in case they're not showing up for you for whatever reason, then if you don't find input action trigger left and input action trigger right, go into your project settings and you should have under input, there should be a section called action mappings. And here, this is where I'm getting our trigger left and trigger right from. You can see for me, these are tied to our Oculus Index, Mixed Reality, and Vive triggers for each one. You may have these named something completely different if you don't find trigger left and trigger right, or maybe you don't have these set up at all. These should be set up by default though, so you should have them. Um, they, they just may be named something different. But that's how you can find those. And these are the buttons that I'm going to be using in order to, uh, in, in order to actually propel ourselves in any direction. So we'll have to hit these triggers in order to propel ourselves. Now, we don't have any sort of node that very simply just tells us that our trigger is being held. And that's really what these two are here for. We need a way to determine if our trigger is being held or if it's not being held. So in order to do this, we're going to go down here to our variables. I'm going to create two Boolean variables. First one I'm just going to call is left trigger pressed. And the second one I'm just going to call right trigger pressed. And I'm going to bring each of these up and we'll be setting each of these twice. So I'm going to just duplicate this left trigger pressed. And then on pressed, we're going to set this to true on false or, or on release, we'll set this to false. And then we're going to do the same here for our right trigger press. And that's all that we need to do here for our, for our triggers here. So let me go ahead and pass that through. There we go. So now we have a way of detecting if our trigger is being held. Now we can move down here onto our vent tick. And this is where we're actually going to control the thrusting of our character in any direction or multiple directions if, we, if we're running both of our motion controllers. So in order to do this, we're going to first run everything through a sequence. This is so we can split up uh, each of our thrusters, one for each hand, and we can allow for ourselves to apply a force in two directions rather than just in one using each of our motion controllers. So now that I've said that, now we go and grab our left trigger pressed. We'll, we'll start off with our left. And on left trigger pressed, we're going to run that through a branch. There we go. I'm going to run that through our then zero here because this is going to be the first sequence we run. Then um, on true, we're going to grab our capsule component here and we're going to uh, add force just like that. And that's going to be on true. So as you can see here in our add force, if we actually mouse over this, this gives us a, a description. This adds a force to a single rigid body and it even mentions that this is like a thruster. It's, it's actually what it implies that this could be for. Uh, and it goes on to say that this is good for adding burst over time um, and should be called every frame during the force, uh, which is why we're running this on tick as well. So in order to do this, uh, you can see that we need to add some kind of force to our add force here. So we're going to do this by grabbing our arrow left and we're going to get the forward vector. Using this forward vector, this isn't what we're going to apply to the force just yet. We're actually going to multiply this and we're going to multiply this by the arrow length. So we're going to get our arrow length that's going to go into our multiply and that's what we're going to apply to our force. 
So what this overall does is this gets the direction that our arrow is currently pointing in. So that way we know which direction we're going to apply this force in. This arrow length acts as our magnitude. So this is going to determine how strong that force is in that direction. Um, and as you can see, we, we can apply some additional uh, modifications here. We can apply this to a particular bone. Um, we can also up add acceleration change. Um, this is all completely optional if you would like. Something else I would like to mention too, is since we're using our capsule component here, this is why simulate physics was enabled. You need to be applying physics in order to apply force to any component. So that's also why we can't use uh, add force on any component. It can only be on ones that have uh, physics as an option. So that's why we're using our character as well, going back to character versus pawn. Um, but anyways, that, that takes care of our whole thruster for a left hand. So I'm just going to go and copy all this because this is going to be quite simple just to bring down. So that's going to go through our then one. Let me go and try and reroute this a little bit better. So let's go and move our arrow left. We're going to pass through our arrow right down here. And then our left trigger press is going to become a right trigger pressed. And that is it. That is our whole thruster character all set up. That is all that we need to do. So I'm going to compile and save all of this, close out of our thruster character, and uh, now here in our scene, I'm going to grab this, place our thruster VR character in our scene, and then under details, I'm going to search up auto, and down here at the bottom, you should have auto, pos auto possess player, set that to player zero, auto receive input, set that to player zero, and that is all that we need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my VR headset and we can uh, give this a test run. All right, so here we are. So. As you can see, I got nothing else going on around me. <laughs> as, as would be expected, this all happened in the character. So, if I actually go ahead, I have both my controllers here. So I'm gonna point one up, press trigger. You can see that I fly right up into the air. So, and, and I can move this around and kind of point whatever direction I want to in. So, there we go, and then, ooh. As you can see, I can do that with my other controller as well. And I can do it with both at the same time. Let me see if I can go straight up, pointing each of them kind of at an angle. Hold on. Yeah, kind of. It does definitely move you a lot faster when, when, you're, uh, when, when you use both controllers, which would be expected given that we are now applying two, uh, two forces to the single player. But yeah, I mean, all this works pretty well. It. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's not mu much more to say other than that, I guess. Um, we're able to kind of fly around, move ourselves around as we would like. Um, as I had mentioned before as well, part of the reason we applied the rotation constraints to our player is because when we hit the ground, it'll kind of start doing all this weird finicky rolling around stuff, which just doesn't look right <laughs> and makes it, and it's just very disorienting too. So um, yeah, so yeah everything just works fine if you were to also run into the ground or if you were to run to a wall or anything like that you shouldn't have any issues there either so and we even kind of slide around for a little bit too so if you wanted to like make it so this doesn't apply an upward force you could just like allow for yourself to slide around the environment so there we go and with that, that's how we set up a very simple thruster player that is able to fly through the sky or even be modified to be used on other objects. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. And I also want to give a quick shout out to my Patreon supporters who you should see over here on the right hand side. And with that, I'll see you in the next reality.